What's up fellow autism? I played a game and I want to talk about it. In 2002, a little known movie came out. You might have heard of it. Uh, Spider-Man. Ah uh, yes, the beginning of the Toby Spidey trilogy. Good movie by the way, go watch it. And as with most good movies, there was a video game adaptation in the form of Spider-Man, the movie, the game. Developed by the world famous Call of Duty devs Treyarch, the game released almost two weeks before the movie came out. So it's been about 21 years since the game and the movie came out like Jesus fucking Christ, so how does it hold up in current year? Treyarch has some experience with Spider-Man games porting 2000 Spider-Man to the Dreamcast, so this can't be too bad, will it? I'll be playing the Xbox version. The PC version is a piece of dog ass. It just does not want to work. I've tried everything. I've tried compatibility mode. I've tried run as admin. I've tried everything, and this game will just will not work. So I'll be playing the Xbox version. Okay? Okay. Without further ado, here is my review of Spider-Man, the movie, the game. And uh, fair warning, fair warning, spoiler alert for the movie and the game. You've been warned. So right off the bat, we go from Peter getting bit to him suddenly fighting the Green Goblin. Now he's on top of the Statue of Liberty for some reason. Now look at that ass fly through the wind. Ooh. Suddenly it's nighttime and Spider-Man is doing like parkour and flips and stuff. Oh yeah, Green Goblin's back. Text and balls and running and more parkour and more flips and doodads that Spider-Man does. More text and Green Goblin and then title card. What a start. Before we get into it, let's check out the tutorial. I'll be playing with the enhanced control scheme, if that matters. Anyways, to help you out is the iconic Bruce Campbell. Greetings. Welcome to the tutorial. Yeah, I know. You want to get on with things, beat up the bad guys, do the whole superhero thing, blah, blah, blah. Well, everyone's got to start somewhere. You're then shown the controls and the mechanics and stuff, all while Brucey here makes fun of you. This is incredible. Am I really doing this? Well, you're easily impressed, aren't you? Swinging is fine. It's done by pressing the R trigger. Hey, king of the world, don't let it go to your head, okay? Hooray for you, you're swinging. You can hold it to gain some speed, but turning is limited when you do that. You're also shown the combat mechanics, and honestly, it's not bad, but it definitely feels a little stiff. You punch with the X button and kick with the B button, and you can input combos so you can do different fighting moves. If you hold the Y button down, you'll shoot out webs, useful for tying up your enemies to temporarily stun them. You're then shown more web moves, all while Bruce is eating something. Okay. So here you are on the side of a building. So if you press the black button while climbing, you'll zip towards the nearest ledge. If you press it while moving, you'll zip in the direction you're going. If you press it while standing, you'll zip straight up. Well, you're almost done. So let's get a little fancy, shall we? Okay. If you hold the left trigger and press the black button, you can suspend yourself from a web line and slowly raise or lower yourself. This is a very sneaky way to check out unfamiliar areas. Okay. 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 Oh, all right. The tutorial is done. Now to the main story. Good job, kid. You might just make something of yourself after all. You're starting off with the opening sob story. It doesn't go into too much detail, which makes sense, but if you know your Spider-Man lore, you'll get the gist of it. It mentions how Peter and his Uncle Ben got into an argument, and then suddenly Peter is in the wrestling ring, kicking this dude's ass. Then he gets scammed by the fight promoter and doesn't give a shit once they get robbed. Then come to find out that robber ended up killing Uncle Ben. And then Peter then takes his powers and uses them for revenge or something. The backstory gets the job done, but I do wish that it covered more. Like Peter finding out he can climb walls and then jumping from rooftop to rooftop and then learning how to shoot his webs. And I do wish that this game wasn't so limited by its E rating. It has a pretty dark storyline as expected, but it's pretty dark for an E rating with several mentions of death and all. Although I really wanted to see PS2 Toby do an ugly cry when Uncle Ben dies, but that's just me. You're then thrown into the Skulls territory, AKA New York City's rooftops, basically beating up everyone on site until you can find Uncle Ben's killer. I don't know why they'd all hang out on the roof tops, but whatever. You're then led into an abandoned warehouse, basically doing the same thing. But you're introduced to the game's stealth mechanics. Basically, while you're in the shadows or if you're climbing on the roof, you're basically unseen to enemies, but you can always drop down and start beating everybody up like I did. Being seen will end up biting you in the ass later on, but to me, 
It makes the game drag a bit. One thing you quickly learn about is that the camera is god awful. Moving forward is not necessarily tied to the camera's position. So if you move the camera while running straight, you don't move with the camera. This gets in the way often and it gets annoying very quickly. Anyways, you keep beating up more enemies, all while getting yourself beat up. And this section is probably where you're gonna die for the first time. And unfortunately, if you die, you start the level from the beginning. That's right. There are no checkpoints. This might be excusable back in 2002 because no one really thought about that, but if you're playing in current year, God damn, does it make a difference? I mean, just imagine spending at least 30 minutes to an hour and then you get ganged up and then you end up playing the whole level again. All that progress for nothing. You'll eventually get to the boss of the level. In level one, it's Uncle Ben's killer. This guy is such a pushover though. He throws flashbangs around and tries to shoot me with his shoddy, but I just web him up and fuck around with him for a bit. It's nice, you can stunlock him with the webs. After enough hits, the killer gets knocked the fuck out. Then Peter's devastated to find out that Uncle Ben's killer was the guy he let go during the robbery. Plot twist much? And then the guy trips over nothing, falls to his death, and then the level ends anticlimactically. Another cutscene. You're hearing an Uncle Ben impersonator who is not Cliff Robertson, by the way, preaching the whole great power comes great responsibility shtick. All while Peter looks depressed, mopey, and emo, all while listening to Nickelback. Then he talks about his two best friends, Mary Jane Watson and Harry Osborne, and Harry and him have a bitchin' new crib in the center of Manhattan thanks to Harry's father, Norman, who is totally not a psychopath, by the way. Peter then mentions that he's working for slave wages at the Daily Bugle, taking pictures of himself, if you know what I mean. He then suddenly changes costume and then webs up his dream journal on a random building that he'll probably never see again. And I'm thinking, if someone finds his diary, they're gonna find out his real identity. What the fuck was he thinking? So then we cut to Oscorp, and Norm is somehow tracking Spider-Man with 2002 technology. He probably has a couple Nokia webcams spread it around the city. And then Norm talks about how Oscorp is gonna lose money if they don't come up with something for his project. His scientist sidekick says something along the lines of, Hey, Spider-Man has the same DNA as a spider, so let's capture him and put his blood in these robots that we're gonna release onto New York City. And Norm is like, Do it. Like, does he not know the major lawsuits this can entail? Imagine one of these fucking things falling out of the sky and taking out a taxi and everyone inside. And it's not like these robots are not made by Oscorp. The logo is literally on the robots. The next level is basically another tutorial level. You're broke as fuck and need to send ass pics to JJ so they can give Harry your rent money. Even though he's the son of a billionaire, but okay, Harry, you can take my rent money taking advantage of the middle class. You're basically told to lock onto this balloon in order to get some good shots. Apparently, Peter set this balloon up all by himself, but I have several questions. How did he set it up? How is it staying still in the air? How has it not popped yet? How much helium did they have back in 2002? I need answers! You're then told to head to the roof of a building, only to immediately get off of it after you head into the marker. Then out of the blue, one of Oscorp's robot goons comes in and starts to ruin the fun. You have to take out 12 of these, and oh look! They don't These blow up, really they fall. Remember when I told you about them falling on a taxi? This could actually happen and Spider-Man ain't doing shit. He's too busy dealing with terrible camera controls and fucking around with balloons. Honestly, the segments where you have to take out X number of robots just kind of drags on and on and on and it feels like it never ends, but I eventually got it. Whew. That's the last of them, but who sent them? More cutscenes! It's a nice Saturday morning and Spider-Man is kind of swinging around, going for his breakfast run and such. And then he's like, oh shit, there's a robbery going on right now. So then he webs up a robber and then his spider senses start tingling. Apparently Shocker is robbing the bank. Then all of a sudden the vulture comes out. Like what the fuck? I'm about to get tag team WWE style. Spider-Man then stops the van and then Shocker's like, nah, fuck this. And then instead of going through the front door like a normal person, he makes it harder for himself and blows up a hole in the wall. Okay, sure. So then you're at the train station and we have to stop Shocker's thugs and protect this one lone security guard from an onslaught of random goons. So is this the graveyard shift or what? No one is here. Then you save him, he runs off and just disappears. Your spider sense gets tingled and then you see this poor security guard take the worst punches ever. Then you basically do the same thing over and over again. 
beat up thugs, save the guards and or civilians, repeat. You then meet Shocker and he's like, I'm trying to get money, Spider-Man. And Spider-Man's like, no. -uh. And then this random guy shows up being very oblivious to what's going on. Bro is on his shitty Nokia phone and this pillar is about to fall on him. And I know phones aren't that loud. So either he's really fucking stupid or suicidal. Either way, he's making my job harder. Why do I have to pick him up? This should have been a part of the cutscene. You really ought to pay more attention. And then we're back at it again, protecting poor security guards from thugs. Don't they have a taser or something? Why do they need my help? So Shocker basically rage quits and then blows up a hole in the floor. Spider-Man does an unnecessarily cinematic flip into the hole and the level ends. We're now in the sewers doing basically the same thing as before. We flip some switches too, all while dealing with the dog shit camera. We see Shocker again and he dips for the third time and he tells one of his goons to flood the New York City sewer system. So then Spider-Man's like, oh shit, I don't want to pay more for my water bill. So then he stops it by finding the stolen valve. This will come in handy. We're still in this godforsaken sewer level and it feels like it just keeps going on and on and on. And then I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why are they having an orgy and why am I not invited? But then someone threw a grenade and broke up all the fun. Aww. Also, this happened. I kind of feel sorry for this guy. This guy is going to be stuck here for all of eternity, which is a punishment within of itself. Imagine being stuck in this god-awful level. Okay, the level isn't actually all that bad. Actually, I end up freeing him, only for him to fall to his death. Lovely. So then we finally arrive to the train tracks. Shocker says some pretty sus shit. That's it, Web Slinger. You've been riding me long enough. Hey, yo, what the fuck? But then Spider-Man says, fuck all that gay shit, slay, and does a cinematic front flip Matrix style. So you got to avoid Shocker's blast, but he kind of teleports instantly to the tunnel you're in. So this stuff feels like it's unavoidable. I mean, goddamn, give me a break. After the sewer section, I have to deal with this bull Shit. But I mean, after a couple of tries, it's pretty much over. Now to the boss fight with Shocker, the most anticlimactic fight I've ever seen. You're trying to find out what the hell is going on when you see Shocker doing a little ballerina tornado dance and sort of launches you backwards. My gut instinct is to pick up an object and throw it at him. But I got blown the fuck out of the water when Shocker immediately targets me and blows up the barrel in my hand. And then when I picked up these gas tanks, I notice how goofy looking this animation is. He doesn't even hold the tanks right. It's kind of funny. You may notice that I'm having a lot of trouble trying to find Shocker. I never thought about pressing the lock on button. I might have finished it sooner if I did that. So then I die. Then I have to start the level over from the very beginning. Very fucking annoying. I try it again. I still get my ass mostly handed to me, but with some patience, I kick Shocker's ass and then find out that Shocker isn't subscribed to Spider-Man's OnlyFans. Uh, I, I, I mean, the vulture is in another abandoned building up in the old clock tower. You then gotta find a way to climb the tower to find Vulture. It turns out to be a Scooby-Doo-like clock tower that's full of booby traps. It's full of explosives and exploding spider robots that seem to be on an aimbot. The Vulture ends up blowing the place up with you trying to find a way out. And I get stuck because I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. And then I died in midair. Lovely. After that, I just climbed up to the top of the clock tower while the place is on fire, all while trying to avoid these spider robots that blow up in my face. Fuck! Son of a bitch! Oh, Gleneth Paltrow! I climb more of the tower and holy shit, what the fuck is happening? A hundred different things are happening at once. My autistic brain can't handle it. I end up finishing it. Then Spider-Man ends up zipping up to the top of the tower. Then after all that I went through, the Vulture escapes. God fucking damn it. You're then chasing Vulture down, trying to avoid his attacks and not trying to let him get away. Vulture then tries to take down this billboard that you gotta web up. Then back to more chasing. Then he tries to take out a water tower that you end up repairing. All this while you're drenched in what's probably the worst rain effects of Gen 6. GTA 3 has better rain than this. This level drags, but it ends abruptly, which is odd, but whatever. So now you're in an in-air boss fight with Vulture. You basically have to beat him up enough so that he becomes grounded, and then you beat him up more. Unfortunately, the frame rate starts to chug in this segment, especially when you're up close and personal with Vulture, but thankfully it isn't all that bad. 
And that's pretty much it. There's nothing special about this boss fight at all. He really isn't that hard. So now we're back at Oscorp. The scientist is telling Norm that there's two targets that have the same DNA to Spider-Man. One of them is Scorpion, and the other we don't know. Norm sends out his HK robots to try to leave both Scorpion and I assume the other guy, or Spider-Man, one of the two, to the same area so that he can capture them simultaneously. We then see a frantic Scorpion trying to escape from more Spider-Bots. You then see Peter in an elevator, and then the elevator starts rumbling, then Peter's like, what the fuck is going on? So then he immediately transforms into Spider-Man. And I know, there is no way in hell he got butt-ass naked and switched to his costume that fast, like holy shit! Then he meets up with Scorpion while he's being chased by the robots, and then you have to help him get rid of them. You have to destroy 20 of them. After that, Lil Bro gets mad at you and thinks you're with the robots for some reason, even though you just saved his ass. Keep away from me! Whoa, hey buddy, I'm just... You're with them! I can tell. I, I can tell. I guess it's the whole spider gimmick. He then has a schizophrenic attack and then spears Spider-Man Goldberg style. Will I destroy you? <laughs> yes, I will! God, what an asshole. You then have to defeat Scorpion in the same train station that we were before. It's an otherwise easy boss battle, but what the fuck is this music? The vibe is way off. It doesn't give boss battle vibes. It sounds like something out of a horror game. After you defeat Scorpion, you fight a spider bot. Wondering who would send these to get you. We're back at Oscorp and Harry finds out he's getting fired from Oscorp's board. He then starts to put his own body on the line. For science! He tells his scientist sidekick to prepare the chamber for injecting this spider serum, even though it's way too early to test. The serum gets injected by inhaling gas? And then Norm starts to have an orgasm. By the way, William Dafoe gives a stellar voice performance in this part, and it's definitely more exciting than Tobey Maguire's performance for this entire game, that's for sure. So then he beats up the scientist, and then we suddenly see the Green Goblin costume that's apparently been at Oscorp for forever at this point. So now we're back on track with the movie. We're at the part where there's the parade and Mary Jane and Harry are hanging out. Peter finds out that Harry is stealing his girl and then suddenly the Green Goblin appears and starts bombing the place. Mary Jane is thrown from the balcony to a balloon and then Spider-Man comes to save the day. I got questions. What happened to Harry? Did he die in that explosion or was he thrown like Mary Jane was? How can Mary Jane stand on that balloon? And then how does Peter comfortably fit the Spider-Man costume under his clothes? He's still needs his mask and gloves, so are they in his pockets? I don't know. Now you gotta beat up the Green Goblin while trying to save Mary Jane, who is standing on the balloon like nothing is happening. But after you save Mary Jane, her and Spider-Man start flirting with each other. Then he leaves her stranded on top of a roof so he can finish the job. It's like that one scene in the movie. You know the one. Wait, who are you? I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. Girls call me the with the false sex. So then you're back to fighting Goblin. You beat him up a few times, and then he starts to destroy the TV tower on top of what I assume is the Empire State Building. You web it up, and then you're back to doing the same garbage over and over again. Don't get me wrong here, I'm having fun with the game, but these boss battles where you're swinging around trying to fight a flying object, it's just not great at all. It gets boring, tedious, and is repetitive as hell. Just look at this exciting gameplay. Would you watch this and be like, damn, I wanna play this game? Yes. This camera doesn't help at all. It's really annoying. This went on for five minutes, and it's not bad per se, but with the clunky camera and controls, it feels like an eternity. You get past this part, the goblin farts away, and for some reason, Spider-Man starts to fall to his death at Central Park. This is probably a glitch, but I had to mention it because it's just fucking funny. And then for the next level, you're basically doing the same thing, but now there's a twist. You end up knocking the goblin off his goblin glider, hurling him inside of a building. Then he starts to fight you physically. He kicks your ass and drains your health in a snap. He is not one to be fucked with. I got my ass handed to me so badly, the game didn't even want me to die properly. So yeah, this part is hard, especially when the goblet is throwing bombs at you and then he tries to give you LSD. But you know me, I'm straight edge, so no drugs, thanks. But I will take Mountain Dew Kickstart Fruit Punch. Totally sponsored, by the way. Wait a minute. This bitch empty! 
but patience is key with these boss battles. Get a couple hits in, refill your health, repeat, and you'll eventually do it. You do the same thing, then Goblin chickens out, but not before telling you that he planted bombs all over the city and you have to disarm them all. And let me tell you, this next level was a pain in the ass to complete. And it's mostly my fault. You see, I went at it for a solid 30 plus minutes, but I was just too slow and I didn't know what to do. Then I thought, oh shit, I forgot I could go faster while swinging. All this time I was swinging at normal speed, but once I was able to swing faster, I beat it in a breeze. So then Norm calls up the homie Craven so he can take out Spider-Man. Craven says, no problem G, I'll do it for free B. So Craven burns a literal spider effigy. JJ asks Peter, why the hell are you not at Central Park taking pictures? This scoop is juicy. Peter then sees the burning spider from the distance and checks it out. Then Spider-Man barges to Craven's zoo. They banter a little, and then Craven presses a switch and engulfs the room in poison gas. You start to get ill, so you gotta find the antidote. This level is basically one big obstacle course, but you also gotta be wary of the poison traveling through your veins. After you get past an area, Craven gets out his sniper rifle and starts to pop a cap in you, and that's basically it. Go past some obstacles, try not to get shot, repeat. Boss battle time, it's pretty much the same shit. There's not really a strategy to this stuff. You just beat him up and try to avoid his hits. And that's pretty much it. A pretty easy boss. Craven then gives you the antidote as promised and then gets tied up. And that ends these Xbox exclusive levels. Next level, you're going back to take care of Goblin and God fucking damn it, another destroy objects while airborne mission. You have to destroy 50 of Goblin's razor bats. Luckily, these don't take as many hits to destroy as other robots, but the camera yet again gets in the way of things. Not only is this tedious, but it makes it a chore to play through. Thankfully, this doesn't take as long as before. You then head into a construction site where you find a piece of a razor bat. So you take it home to investigate. Peter finds out that these robots are coming from Oscorp. He then decides to break into the place. Norm starts to go more ape shit over Spider-Man and that's how the cutscene ends. Now, remember when I mentioned the stealth mechanics of the game? Well, these next few levels take full advantage of them and it's not for the best. You break into Oscorp and then you traverse through the place while trying not to get caught. You find a locked vault, which needs a special code to unlock it. To get the code, you have to run around and go through computers that might have a piece of the code. It's simple, but when you get caught, these robots come looking for you and they show no mercy. They will decimate you in five seconds if you're not careful. For this game, Spider-Man and Stealth do not go together. And again, if you die, you have to start the level from the very beginning with no checkpoints. Fucking Bullshit. You then gotta enter the code by lining up these graphics, which opens the door and then the level ends. Spider-Man overhears a conversation between two scientists. Then Spider-Man says, what's cooking, broski? And then the scientist is like, holy shit, is that Spider-Man? You're then told that there's a machine that does chemical injections. I guess this is that spider serum that was shown earlier. You have to head into four control rooms in order to stop the machine from doing the injections. You have to hit the switches in the correct order or else the machine will blow up or something. But again, this this heavily relies on stealth, and there's some moments where it's impossible to do just that. You'll still get caught, but then you gotta waste more time trying to get these robots off of you. It's just one big waste of time, and it just doesn't work. So after you do that, you have to destroy this giant robot by taking out 10 of its generators. This was another level that was insanely difficult because of my stupidity. First off, holy shit, I'm getting pummeled by whatever the fuck is going on here. There's homie missiles flying at me, and there's some electric turret that keeps kicking my ass. By the way, there's no cooldown for when you get hit. Later on, I try to destroy the generators on the far edge of the map, but the giant robot ends up decimating you with a laser that it's impossible to avoid. I tried several times to get past this, but I kept getting killed. Then I realized there's a catwalk. Why not just destroy the generators from there? It made this level so much easier, and I felt pretty stupid after doing this, not gonna lie. After you destroy all the generators, you then beat up the robot's core, and then it gets destroyed. Ethan forgot to talk about this cutscene where Spider-Man barges in and goes through some secret Oscorp documents. Spidey finds out that Mary Jane is Goblin's target, and then Spidey is like, oh no. You're then back in Oscorp's lobby trying to escape. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about stealth in this part, so you can just zip past all the robots who are still showing no mercy and are trying to rip you apart. But oh wait, you can't zip past them because you have to disable the security systems. Imagine being Spider-Man and having to deal with all this shit. Laser wires, 
robots, and other shit. I mean, look at this! I can't catch a break! I'm being tossed around like a fucking ragdoll. But then after you disable everything, now you can zip past the robots. Thankfully, it wasn't too chaotic after that. Cut to Mary Jane coming back home from a long day of uh, shopping. She then sees a giant hole in her tiny ass apartment and then the green goblin creeps up behind her and then kidnaps her. How long was he hiding in her bathroom, you creep? This is what you get for living in New York. Cut to another long and boring chase level. God damn, this sucks. At least I know how to swing faster in order to catch up to the goblin, but I still had trouble keeping up. But I eventually got it, and guess what? It's final boss time. Let's finally settle our feud. I'm gonna kick this guy's ass once and for all. But it turns out I'm the one who's gonna get his ass kicked. You're then taken to the Brooklyn Bridge. The goblin sets down Mary Jane on top of the bridge and sets it on fire. So you pick up Mary Jane's fat ass and you drop her not in front of the police, but far, far away from the police. What the fuck was Spidey thinking? She has to walk all that distance in her high heels? Spidey, do you really think that she's gonna run after being captured, hanging off a glider 500 stories in the air? Probably not. Now that you saved her, it's time to kick some ass. It's basically the same as the first Green Goblin fight, but in a different location. It isn't hard per se, but as I said before, you gotta have patience. The Goblin starts throwing bombs and shooting me and shit, but after punching him a couple times, he falls off the glider. Then you can finally have a man-to-man -man fist fight on the bridge, but then he starts kicking my ass and doing MMA moves on me. Then he starts throwing bombs at me and I'm getting launched everywhere. But I'm Spider-Man. I'm gonna do what a spider can. So no more playing around. Let's stop this green bitch. It's a clusterfuck of an evening here at the Brooklyn Bridge. Thank you for joining us for Dumb Fuck Fighting Central on BSPN. Al Cordova here alongside my commentator, John Zappa. Yes, Al, we have an intense match on the Brooklyn Bridge. I can't believe we got contacted this late to show up. I wasted 200 bucks on a taxi to get here. You wasted 200 bucks on a taxi? Look, I took the train. My wife doesn't even know I'm here. Well, that's what you get when you're living in New York. That's right, John. Anyways, we have an intense match right now. The Green Goblin has been causing trouble, and local menace turned hero Spider-Man is here for a fight. I'll tell you what, John. This is going to be an intense match. You're right, Al. This is going to be a real slobber knocker. Looks like Spider-Man is trying to knock Goblin off that glider. Is that even legal? I don't think so, John, but this is an unsanctioned match, so we can't say anything. Ooh, that bomb just domed Spider-Man right on the head. That's not gonna look pretty tomorrow, John. It seems the Spider-Man gave Goblin the old one-two, and Goblin has fell off the glider. Ah, uh, yes, it seems they're on the ground now. Finally, we can get some good shots. Goblin with that back suplex on Spidey. Ooh, that has to hurt. Ah, John, J John, I, I can't, I can't see shit. Uh, you're, you're correct, Al. We are currently blind. I, I can't see shit. Uh, okay, are we back? I can see again, and it seems that Spidey is throwing some haymakers here. You're correct, Al. It seems Spidey is taking the lead. Oh, what a picture-perfect knockout, Al. Looks like the Goblin has been BTFO, John. That's right, Al. His back has been blown the fuck out. Well, New York, you saw it. Spider-Man is your world champion. That's right, Al. The bridge is still on fire. We have to get out of here before we get arrested. That's right, John. My wife is currently calling me right now, and she will be pissed off at me when I get home. Well, let's get that all out of here. Good night from New York. Back to you. The goblin then reveals his true identity. <gasps> Norman! Spidey and him talk for a bit, and then his glider comes out of nowhere and then knocks the fuck out of him. Killing him, by the way. Yeah, he doesn't get impaled like in the movie. The glider kind of just tickles him to death. You know, E-rating and such. Thank God to Spidey and Mary Jane flirting with each other again, and then, uh, oh. <laughs> They're making it out in front of a corpse. Yeah, that's my life. Complicated. Looks like you're done now. Go outside and play. Damn, that ending was drier than the Sahara Desert. So is Spider-Man the movie, the game, worth revisiting? You might be surprised given how I've been somewhat critical of the game, 
But yeah, it's worth it. Look, there was times where this game got boring and there was times where the game got frustrating, but you know what? I still had fun. I was Spider-Man. I was Tobey Maguire. I made out with Kirsten Dunst, or a soap replica of her. I still had fun, damn it. It's a nice tie-in, and it's very cool to see that they somewhat followed the movie while adding new scenarios to the fold. I like how they added in Shocker, Vulture, and Scorpion to the mix. I'd rather have this than to have it follow the movie 100%. I do feel that there were parts that were rushed, or that the dev team weren't allowed to view the movie again to get more accurate scenes to translate that to the game, but I do feel that what we got was probably the best they could do. I mean, it would have been cool to see the final fight take place in the abandoned warehouse like in the movie, but how many levels of this game took place inside somewhere abandoned? I even think that devs felt like it was getting tedious and unimaginative. It would have been cool to see a pre-rendered cutscene where Peter is at the graveyard with Mary Jane like in the movie, instead of kissing in front of a dead guy while the Brooklyn Bridge is on fire surrounded by cops. It would have given the game a sense of finality that Mary Jane isn't in love with Spider-Man, but with Peter Parker. But in this this game, it feels like she's just in love with Spider-Man. But that's my two cents on the ending. Overall, the devs did a good job. The camera, though, needed a ton of work. And again, as I said, the game gets boring at parts. So that's why I give Spider-Man, the movie, the game, a solid three out of five. Thankfully, Treyarch was allowed to continue on with the Spidey IP, making probably one of the best movie tie-in games of all time. But that's for another video. I also want to mention the bonus features. I didn't get too into them. You can unlock an alternate Spider-Man costume, which was designed by Alex Ross, which was supposed to be used in the movie, but got cut as they went for the more classic Spider-Man costume. You can play as the Green Goblin, who has his own unique dialogue. Look out, Skulls. There's a new Green Goblin in town. And you can even play as Mary Jane and have a hot, steamy lesbian kiss that ruffled some feathers, you homophobes. Other than that, there's not much else to say. And that's it. Thank you so much for making it this far. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I didn't. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Join my Discord server and follow the socials in the links below. And if you're interested in old school G4 Tech TV or other VHS goodies, check out my other channels, Enun and Enun2. Shout out to Ivan for helping me write the script to this video. And shout out to Sony for releasing Spider-Man on 4K Blu-ray so I can get some good high quality clips from the movie. Also, check out my review of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. This game is garbage. It is a piece of dog ass. And if you want to hear my thoughts on it, check out this review up here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.